So hey, welcome back to Bearded Bastard Outdoors. This is kind of a two part, this is kind of part two to a uh, previous video on how to build a tinder bundle, which I have sitting over here, waiting to go. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a bow drill. And bow drills, friction fires are extremely frustrating to learn. Um, even when you think you got everything right, you don't. So um, when you're when you're learning out, but once you but once it clicks, once it clicks, and once you get it, um, you know. I'm not gonna say it gets easier, but what I'm saying is what I'm gonna say is that you know that it shouldn't be so hard. So if you're killing yourself trying to get an ember from a bow drill, then uh, you know that a your technique is could be off, or b your material isn't any good. So right now, I just want to talk a little bit about material. Um, the material has to be dry, it has to be absolutely dry or else it's not going to work. Any moisture, con I mean, duh, moisture, fire don't mix, right? Um, so the material has to be dry. So we're looking for a deadfall, but a deadfall that's not on the ground. It's raised off of the ground. That way we have good airflow, right? And it's not rotting. So in this, so this piece right here is a piece of willow that I found. Uh, just hanging out in the branches. So, I mean, it's, I don't know how long it's been dead, but it, uh, it was off the ground and willow's a good material because it's softer wood. Um, also, I got this really nice straight piece that's like more than a foot long, so that's awesome. And then I got this nice long straight piece right here that's a little bit thicker that I can use for my hearth board. So, I might try that out uh, a little bit later, see how it works. Also, I found a uh, dead cedar, and so I pulled off of one of the branches this really nice straight piece. It's got a little bit of a bow to it, but I mean, it's relatively straight, about a foot long, which is what I like, um, which is what I like about it. It's about as thick as my thumb, which is good. And then uh, just up above this was the thicker part of the branch, which what I like about this is that purple Right there, there's not a whole lot of purple. And what I mean by that is if you split the piece of cedar open and you have this purple everywhere, in my experience, this is really hard. That's really hard, okay? And I, I don't have a good whole lot of good luck with it. However, ah, makes a pretty darn good spindle because it is a little bit harder, okay? But what we're looking for is we're looking for that white um, part of the white part of the cedar. Okay. In another video, I will show like using that, show the processing of it. But essentially what you're going to do is you're going to process it into a few pieces. Uh, you have your spindle, which, uh, people have different opinions on how long this should be. This one's about as long as my forearm. I'm good with that. Other people have it, you know, as long as like a hang loose symbol, hand gesture, you know, that's fine. Um, you want it to be as about as thick as your thumb. That way it doesn't break, okay? And when you're processing it, you want one side to be a nub while the other side is, is nice and pointy, okay? You have your hearth board here, which should be it, preferably of, of the same stock, but if not, if it, nice and nice and soft, okay? I don't have any fingernails because I have bad habits and anxiety, but I should be able to take a fingernail or my knife and create a nice indention with very no little to no effort. I mean, I'm barely pushing and I'm getting indentations. That's good. I can also take my knife, just kind of gouge into it, and if I can just chunk it, that, that's a nice soft piece of wood. So that's what I'm looking for on that. I have a bow, which for me is just is a is something with a natural curve, hardwood, so it doesn't break. About the length of my arm from armpit to fingertip. Okay, a little bit shorter, but it'll work for this. And just really resistant. And then obviously I have my paracord here for my string. And then I have my piece of bark here for my coal catch and then my tinder bundle. So 
So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna grab my chair because my knee hurts sitting on the ground. So the way that I'm gonna process this bow, I'll go ahead and get this paracord off so it doesn't get in the way. The way I'm gonna process this bow is I'm gonna go ahead and on one side, I'm gonna create these grooves here, okay? On both sides. That way my paracord just sits in there and it doesn't slip out. And then on this side, now there's different, um, different ways of teaching it. Some people will talk about carving this down and boring a hole through it. I just create a notch right there that my paracord just slips through and I tie a knot. It's, it works for me. Find out what, what's, what works best for you. So I already got my knot in my paracord and I just put it in there like such, holds it in place. Then from here, bling, 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 I need my spindle. I need to be able to test the uh, tightness of it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and run the paracord through these grooves. Again, so it just kind of holds it in place. And right here, I can tell you that's a little bit too much. So I'm gonna just pull it in a little bit and get some slack. There we go. Okay. And I only wanna do this one time. I don't wanna have to fidget with this thing over and over again. But I'm just gonna put a, uh, a constrictor knot on there half hitch or just kind of like a clove hitch type deal. Okay. There we go. Uh, test the tightness of it. I'm gonna go ahead and just run my spindle in here. And I mean, I can't even, uh, so that's too tight. Go ahead and take some out. Just a little bit. Okay, a little bit looser. Let's test that out. Hey, ah. Now that might be a little bit too tight, but like what I was always taught, a rule of thumb, when you put it in there and if I let it go, and if it spins like that, then that's, that's a good starting point. So we'll try that and see how that looks. So our bow's prepped. Now let's go ahead and set our spindle. So on our spindle, we want one stubby end that's going to go on our hearth board, and that's what's going to create all the. We want it, you know, stubby because it's going to create a lot. It's going to cause that friction and create that dust. So I'm going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come down about a half inch, and I'm just going to go ahead and kind of whittle my way up, just little chunks, create a, just doing a straight line around. Okay, just like that. Now I went. Now first I went down a half inch. Now I'm going to come down halfway or a quarter inch, and I'm going to do the same thing. This also helps keep the spindle straight and uh, centered. Okay, so now I did that, and then I went down a quarter inch. Now I'm gonna go, you guessed it, an eighth of an inch, and I'm gonna do the same thing. These ridges help create friction as well. And so you can create your dust. And I'm just gonna continue to go in half and half and half and half and half. So I went an eighth of an inch, now I'm gonna go 16th of an inch. Okay. And these little ridges, don't worry about those because those are going to grind down into dust. Okay. 
and then up here I'm going to sharpen it to almost like a stubby pencil. Okay, so I got a nice pointy end. I'll just take that little, ah, little top off there. Now this is pointy because I don't want any friction up here. I want this to file uh, or, or glide smoothly. Now my next piece right here is my hearth board or my fire block, fire board, hearth board, whatever you want to call it, right? Um, again, it needs to be a soft wood. I don't have any fingernails in there, but if you just kind of find my camera here, if you just kind of observe I'm barely gonna push with my knife and it leaves that indentation right there. I mean, with minimal, eff minimal effort, right? Versus if I was to have a hardwood and do that, it'd be a lot harder to do that. I got it, it's about thumb width. So, I mean, it, it, I mean just, pick out, just pick out a piece of it. This cedar and the spindle cedar came from the same piece. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a divot I need to figure, I need to find out, determine a good place for a divot, okay? Which for me, I'm gonna do about right there. And I'm just going to choke down on my knife and I'm just going to simply create a create a divot make sure it'll work yep that'll work okay next thing I have is I have a piece of hardwood here a piece of oak that I use for my hand for my bearing block it's a little big but it fits nice in my hand and um, this is what I'm able to insert my other end of my spindle into and protect my hand and because this is a hardwood and this is a pointy tip it's not going to create as much friction right and then lastly i have a piece of bark to catch my coal okay so let's go ahead and do this up so i have this barrier between my fireboard and the ground because obviously the ground has moisture in it and i want to keep as much moisture off of my fire prop making process as possible. And I have this glove because I got little girl knees. So the first thing I need to do is I need to marry my spindle into my hearth board and I'm gonna do that with a burn in. So I'm gonna take my, uh, my bow and wrap it up. Now what I wanna talk about real quick is you gotta pay, is when you do the burn in, you gotta pay attention to the color of the dust. Oops. Um, if it's really light brown, then that means that you got moisture in um, one of either the hearth board or in the spindle. So you just, it's fine. Just repeat the process until you get really fine black dust. But I'm gonna take my foot, place it down, okay? And then should be able to see on the camera, I got my other knee out. You know, I'm on, I'm on one knee, right? I'm gonna place my spindle in the divot that I made, it's already in the it's already in the bow. I'm going to wrap my leg around, locking my forearm and my wrist into my shin, and then with my bow, I'm going to use the full mechanics to my advantage. So I'm not going to short stroke it, right? I'm going to take the full length of the bow. Okay. Right now it's creeping up on me, so let's go see if we can't work that down. I don't want it to creep up on me or else it's gonna pop out of my handhold. Okay. And then I'm just putting, I'm just, I'm just kind of leaning into it. I'm not putting a whole lot of weight into it. I'm gonna use the full mechanics of the bow and I'm just gonna do a burn in. So I'm looking, I'm just looking for smoke. Nice smooth strokes. I see dust. see smoke okay. 
that's good dust and that's a good burn. You see how dark that is? Maybe. Now the next thing I need to do is I need to get is I need to get a notch cut in. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll be right back. So the way that I'm gonna cut my notch is I'm gonna take my knife, I'm gonna find the center line, and I'm just gonna score it. Just like so. And then I'm gonna come off at angles, not too, not too deep, but not too shallow either. Just like that, okay? It's not an art project, so don't get too bent up, don't get too hemmed up on that, okay? And that's just a dovetail. All the lines go down, and we'll start whittling it up. If you have a multi-tool with a saw, let's go much faster. Now you'll notice that I have kind of a wide hole. I have a wide hole uh, because I want all my dust to collect in there, right? I don't want it to get pushed out. Um, and, all the, and also I want oxygen to both flow in there. But you see, my notch only goes about a third-ish of the way into my, uh, of my hole there. And then what I'm gonna do on the bottom here is I'm just going to carve out a little bit that way I just get a little bit more oxygen because remember in our fire triangle heat fuel and oxygen all right just like just like so it just I mean it doesn't have to be super pretty it just allows a little bit more oxygen to flow in okay now let's do this thing assume the position down on one knee got my hearth board here Going, oh, I got my chunk there to be able to catch the coal. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and step on there. A little bit. There we go. Got a little bit of a breeze. Hopefully that won't cause an issue. Now. As I'm going, I'm not gonna put a whole lot of weight in there until it billows up with smoke and it gets hot. Then I really wanna crank into it, right, for about another 45 to 60 seconds. So if you can't put your body weight into it, one thing you can do is just slide your knee back and then that'll naturally lower your body into that position. So that's just a, a tip. I guess while I'm here too, Sometimes when you do it, this will be glazed over, but, and you want to just take opportunity to make sure that everything's good to go, but everything appears to be in good work and order. So we'll just rock and roll with it. And this is a marathon, <laughs> okay? Don't get frustrated. If you get frustrated, just take a breath, try again. So again, I'm gonna use the full length of the bow. I'm gonna keep the bow parallel to the ground. I'm not putting a whole lot of weight on here. Again, I could keep a conversation while I hold this, and I'm just gonna go until I start, until I get a whole lot of smoke. So it's smoking already. Still applying the same amount of pressure. As you can see, I can still hold a conversation. Oh, and I guess what I should mention too is in this little groove thing, or this notch, I'm watching all of the dust pick up and accumulate in there. So I'm really not gonna do anything until I see that thing, that notch fill with dust. Cause that dust is what's going to ignite. So it's about full of dust. Pick up the pace a little bit. Got good dust, I'm gonna go ahead and lay into it.
All right, so we got their coal. I'm gonna go ahead and take a breath. But as you can see, I'm not really out of breath. I'm gonna very carefully remove it. Now I'm just, it's no hurry. Now I'm just gonna let it coalesce. And I'm gonna go get my tinder bundle that I built earlier. <clears throat> All right, so we can tell what direction the wind is coming from. That coal is nice and ready. So I'm just going to marry the two. And I'm just gonna let it heat up my tinder bundle here. Get this out of the way so I'll start a fire with it. Gentle breaths. Just letting it, just letting it heat up, dry out the material. Buster, catch. And because flames go up, turn it over. And then from there, and then from there I can build my fire. So there you have it. You see how easy it is. I hope that this helped you a little bit. I'm going to do another video tomorrow, maybe, um, of like a step-by-step -step breakdown of it. But um, I hope this was helpful to you. Just remember, it's frustrating to learn. I got it, right? It took me a long time to get my first bow drill fire. Um, it's absolutely frustrating. Don't give up if uh, you see how easy it was. So, like, if something's not working out, just remember, are, are you using proper materials? Um, is your technique good, right? Those are the two, those are two of the, the, the reasons why it wouldn't work. So continue to try, continue to study. If you need help, reach out to me. Um, you know, I'm going to make that t tutorial. So make sure you stay on the lookout for that. And, uh, you know, if you found this video to be helpful, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. It would really help me out. Uh, leave your comments in the, in the comments section, check out the blog site. The link is in the description as well, just, uh, for more tips, tricks and how to, how to do's and whatever. So anyways, remember go out, prepare, train and survive. Catch you on the next video.